Hello, and welcome to episode 31 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode, I'll be painting the Black Sun Enforcers from Atomic Mass Games' Star Wars Legion. As usual, I'm going to begin by assembling the miniatures, which is pretty straightforward, and there are some attractive options for some of their heads. After priming and basing the figures as described in the previous episode, I've also chosen to provide a white dry brush to sharpen some of the details. Next I'll be painting the Enforcers to a decent tabletop standard quite quickly, sticking to the canonical colour scheme and using a combination of base colours, contrast colours and a little shade. I'll then be exploring a range of optional highlights and finishing touches, and I'll also be sharing some of the additional colours I used for the unit leader and the Vigo. Let's jump in with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the purple parts of the outfit using a 3 to 1 mix of Space Wolves Grey and Shyish Purple, thinned with a little contrast medium. I'm basing my colour choices mainly off the appearance of the Black Sun Enforcers in the Clone Wars series. This synergises nicely with the Xenothal highlights, giving us a high contrast finish with very little effort. Next I'm using a 3 to 1 mix of Griff Charger Grey and Black Templar for most of the metallic areas, including the boots, some of the arm sections, the spiny backs and the weapons. And here I'm just using Basilicanum Grey for the upper legs and the inner tunic. Next I've chosen to use Wildwood for the belts. For the golden yellow areas I'm using elven gold and you could use whatever your preferred bright gold colour might be. I've also chosen to use a darker tone, in this case black gold, to place some patches of shadow or dark reflection, but this is pretty optional. After placing the bright gold tone down, you can see I'm now just dropping some of the darker tone into the shadows. Once again, you can see me breaking things up a bit by simply adding darker patches of reflection quite freely.
You could leave the gold as it is if you like the sparkly look, but I've chosen to tone things down a bit with an application of Seraphim Sepia. This will add some further variation of tone and depth in the recesses, and also leave a more matte finish. Here's how it looks once dry. Next I'm painting the small areas of skin simply using Creed Camo. And for what it's worth, I'm now shading the claws using Skeleton Horde. And finally, I'm painting the gold panels on the weapons which I missed earlier. With that done, we've already achieved a nice tabletop standard, and there'd be nothing wrong with stopping here if you like. Otherwise, join me now for some optional finishing touches. The first thing I'd like to do is add some highlights to the purple areas using sandalwood, which is a pinkish skin tone. My aim here isn't so much to increase the brightness, but to introduce some saturation and gentle variation of hue. For the more metallic areas however, I'm going to push the levels up quite far with the addition of some Tenera yellow and some white sands. Next I'm going to highlight the belts by adding increasing amounts of Tenera Yellow to the Wildwood base tone. I'm pushing these quite far to achieve a somewhat shiny finish. And I'm now just brushing over some wildwood thinned with medium to tie things together. To highlight the remaining metallic areas, I'm using white sands mixed with a little abyssal blue.
Next I'm brightening up the skin using a mix of spring green and autumn green. And I'm articulating the claws with a touch of Thar Brown. I've also decided to add a few quick highlights to the gold using Elven Gold mixed with White Sands. And I'm now painting the eye slits using pure white, followed with some Tenera yellow. Next I'm adding some dark lining to tidy up some scrappy edges and boost the definition. And as usual, I like to use a nice matte black for the rims of the bases. Let's now take a look at some of the things I did differently with the Unit Leader and Vigo. For the purple areas, I used the same mix of Space Wolves Grey and Shyish Purple, but without thinning with medium, as I wanted a slightly richer tone. Here you can see that I've inverted the Vigo to encourage the paint to flow where I need it. For the greenish textured parts of the outfit, I'm using a mix of Griff Charger Grey and Creed Camo. and I'm using Wildwood for the unit leader's boots. Here I've chosen to use some Militarum Green for the inner part of the top. And for the skin, I'm once again using Creed Camo, but also some Plague Bearer Flesh to create some tonal variation on the heads. I'm now painting all of the golden areas exactly as described for the rest of the unit.
Here I'm applying the sepia shade on some final highlights. Next I'm painting the hair using a mix of black and Caspian blue. And here I'm adding some white sands for the brighter highlights. For the purple fabric I'm starting with a mix of violet and sandalwood to create a more saturated finish and then adding a little Tanera yellow for the brighter highlights as before. I'm now painting the panels on the boots using Thar Brown mixed with a little black, then highlighted with a touch of pure Thar Brown. And I'm highlighting the rest of the boots by adding Tanera yellow to the wildwood base tone, just as I did for the belts. I'm providing a few highlights to the face as described earlier for the hands, and I'm also suggesting the whites of the eyes. And finally I'm using some abyssal blue to provide the mottled skin markings for the unit leader before painting the rims of the bases in black. And this completes the Black Sun Enforcers. Thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed the episode and found some of the ideas useful. As usual you'll find a full product list in the video description along with all of the places I can be found online. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!